Welcome back to Economics. This is the last video of week five that we are covering. So make sure that you've gotten all the things ready that you're turning in with your week five packet. That includes uh, homework and a quiz and a test for chapter 10. Make sure you have that and that you'll be turning it in with your week five packet. Today we're going to finish up Roman numeral one by beginning with the Federal Open Market Committee. Right now we're talking about the different institutions that create our money. Uh, such institutions include the individual Federal Reserve District Banks, also the Board of Governors, which controls those district banks, and now letter C, the Federal Open Market Committee, otherwise known as the FOMC. First thing you need to know about the FOMC is that it affects the money supply by buying and selling governmental securities, such as treasury bills, treasury notes, and treasury bonds. In fact, it is the Fed's most important tool in changing the quantity of money in the money supply. There are a total of 12 members in the FOMC. Uh, you'll want to know who these 12 members are. They include the seven Board of Governors and five of the Federal Reserve District Bank Presidents, of which one of them must be the President of the New York District. <laughs> Question might be asked, why does it have to be a pres the president from the New York district? Well, the New York president acts as account manager to monitor the purchases and sales of securities that occur in the financial market of New York City. So in New York City, of course, we all recognize it being a very important city. So they want to make sure the president of the New York district uh, is a member of the FOMC. Letter D, the independence of the Federal Reserve System. Uh, is the Federal Reserve System part of the national government, or is it its own thing? Well, the answer is yes, but the Fed is independent of the national government. You might ask, why is that the case? One, or first idea was, the reason to keep the money supply free from political control. Congress believed the nation needed a central bank, but feared that such a bank might be used by self-serving politicians, namely themselves. So, the Federal Reserve System is free from political control. Question might be asked, how? Well, first of all, they are politically independent. With one term on the Board of Governors expiring every two years, it is difficult for one president or one Congress to control the Fed for a long period of time by packing the board with those whom he favors. True. Number two. Also, the Fed is financially independent. Uh, this is worth noting. It sets and operates under its own budget by charging fees for the services it provides to banks, by selling its stock to new member banks, and by collecting interest on the securities it holds and the loans it makes. Otherwise, if Congress controlled the Fed's budget, the potential would exist for congressional representatives aggressively seeking re-election to threaten the Fed with extinction if it did not create and lend billions of dollars to banks in their districts. And a third how is it operates independently. Though Congress requires the chair of the Board of Governors to report to it periodically, no one may dictate what actions the Federal Reserve System must take. The Fed's financial records are exempt from audit by any agency or agent. 
uh, this is worth noting, no one may examine the Fed's books without its permission. So, next question asks, does this mean the Fed is all-powerful since they are independent from the national government? The answer is obviously no. Uh, the next point, uh, maybe you want to write down or if you're a caring about organization. The next point will be parallel to the why and the how will be located right here. Limitations. There are certain limitations placed on the Fed. First of all, Congress can remove members of the Board of Governors for cause. If members of the Board act irresponsibly, Congress can remove them. By the way, the term for cause is a legal term that Congress may interpret as narrowly or as broadly as it wishes. So Congress does have the power to remove boards of governor. Number two, Congress created the Fed. Therefore, Congress can abolish the Fed. The leaders of the Fed understand that Congress created the Federal Reserve System by legislative action and that by an opposite piece of legislation, legislative action, Congress could be as easily abolishing it. So, therefore, the Fed, yes, it's independent, yes, it's free, but it does have to do its job because Congress can remove members and Congress could, you know, honestly remove the Fed if it really saw it necessary. J.P. Morgan. Uh, J.P. Morgan was a formidable financier. Uh, you guys maybe remember learning about him as one of the robber barons of the late 18, early 1900s. Thing worth noting about him is that he provided financial advice and backing for the government. Uh, turning your books to page 211, please read the box entitled J.P. Morgan, Formidable Financier. Uh, once you have finished reading that box, please unpause the video and we'll continue. For your homework, yep, that's all we're covering for this week. Uh, so please make sure you get all the chapter or the week five material in your packets ready to turn in. Also include this last homework assignment that I'm giving you right now. Turn in your activities book to page 121 and 122 in the activities book. We're actually going to start this homework together in class uh, so that you understand how it works. It says Federal Reserve notes. In the U.S. today, the U.S. Treasury produces paper currency and the Fed places it into circulation. Within the Fed, there exist 12 Federal Reserve banks that oversee the distribution of U.S. currency. By spelling out its name and printing its district number or corresponding letter, each Federal Reserve bank identifies itself several times on the face of each Federal Reserve note it places in circulation. Were you to examine the face of a $1 bill, ooh, like this one, look to the left of the portrait and you would see a black seal containing the name of the Federal Reserve District Bank that produced the note and the letter of the district. So you see the name of it right here. You see the letter of it right here. The district number is the number that corresponds to the letter. For example, if this was an A, then it would be a 1. Uh, if it was a B, it would be a 2. It would, if it was a C, as you see here, it would be a 3. Oh, look, I'm noticing a few 3s around here. Well, the question on, on the first page is where and how many times does a Federal Reserve Bank identify itself on the face of a $1 Federal Reserve note. I will give you the number of times it does, but your responsibility is to identify where it's on it. So, the total is eight times. Eight times on the first page, on the, the front of a bill, it identifies what bank it is. I've already given you two of them with the seal and the big letter there but you need to find the other six. On the back side of the page, page 122, 
It says using your text page 210, write the name and identifying letter of the Federal Reserve Bank that serves the districts indicated. I think that'll be pretty straightforward. And then at the bottom, answer the following questions using the map and your textbook. That's your homework. Please make sure you do this homework. It will be due with your week five packet. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. Be good, do good. Bye.